hands are in the deck for the Party Poker European Open 5. Poker players come in all shapes and sizes, but there's only one European number one, and he's on the table tonight. Mark Goodwin will have his work cut out for him, though. Two of his competitors made a final in this format their last time out, and over the last 20 years, many consider Ben Roberts the finest European to ever hold two cards. So which of these best can beat the rest? Bidding to be the second hit squad member in the semifinals, James Aikenhead's one of the brightest young players in British poker. They say he's made the squeeze play his own, and nothing but victory will do. I think I have a big edge against most players who play these events. Um, I think a lot of players that do play these events are quite inexperienced in, in this structure and don't really know when to push or when to fold. This is the hardest heat I've ever been in because the players are quite strong. Big Stel Stelios Philippou is a Poker Den veteran making his first appearance here in the European Open. He's a big man with a big reputation, the last guy you'd ever want to push around. Don't let his big smile and easygoing manner fool you. Mr. Cool Mark Goodwin is one of the most intense players on tour. He's made this game and table his own, but a win here would definitely put an exclamation point on European number one. I understand the strategy that's involved in playing these tournaments and there definitely is. It's a fast structure, there are definite times when you shouldn't be raising, you should just be pushing and there are times when you should lock up a bit and let other people do the work for you and a lot of people also get scared playing in front of cameras. They're a bit more conservative and you can, you can play on that. They don't want to be seen to be a fool whereas I am a fool so I don't care. Nathan Lee is a cagey veteran of televised poker. He knows the game and has got the moves, but just needs the cards to fall to break his European Open duck. Londoner Ben Roberts was sixth place in the 1998 WSOP main event. If they say form is temporary and class is permanent, Ben's been in form for over 20 years. Ryan Frond is called the most handsome man in British poker. He's had a nice string of results in this format, including two times making the semi-final stages but a final table here will really cement his game. Well, the draw in this tournament has thrown up some really intriguing matchups. I'm here with Nick Perso and Nick contrasting styles on this table. I mean, Mark Goodwin on one hand, leading all the tournament rankings in Europe. On the other hand, Ben Roberts, not many tournament results in the last five years, but generally considered one of the top cash game players sort of in the history of Europe. Chips on the table. The yellow chip's worth a thousand, blue chip's worth two, and the red's worth five thousand apiece. A hundred thousand in every bread. chair, six hundred <laughs> can play. Not only the contrasting styles of the cards are in the air, Nick, between Goodwin and Ben Roberts, but, uh, you know, Ryan Fronda and James Aikenhead, both guys who are really competent players. Uh, maybe Fronda's got a slightly tighter style Raised than Aikenhead. five thousand. I mean, you know, Fronda's one of those kind of players Plus. that got the gear changes. You need gear changes Plus. in this kind of format. We might see Ryan get off to a slow, someone, some people might say passive, Plus. tight start, but you know, this guy's got all the moves and can definitely cool. play. Not everybody plays ace nine suited up front uh, in this format firsthand, but good one, 5,000 raises to send a message for you. I tell you, confidence is a great thing. They know that he might be the man in a tournament format that might be the favorite in this heat, and he's definitely asserting himself on the first hand. Stelios uh, peels off the flop for the big blind with the raggedy ace, and he's hit the pair. Uh, and now Goodwin doesn't even fire the continuation bet. Do these guys know each other? You know, Mark Goodwin has totally missed the flop. You know, he's thinking that uh, our man Stelios here might be defending with middling cards, and it might not be a great ball to fire 11, at. And he was right. His instincts are good. He was well behind on the flop, and he's now basically drawing dead on the turn. Right. So, uh oh. Raise. And I mean, that six, a great card for, for Stelios because not only does it make him the three sixes, but <laughs> to say, it looks to Goodwin like uh, uh, it couldn't have helped Phil. Can we just ask if this Absolutely. is like a wind up hand to start with? <laughs> <laughs> I just need to know. Goodwin saying here like, that he no. might have something, this but uh, this, isn't the this, is this is a bit this of the speech. Dream. Keep the image intact like he didn't raise. He's trying to say he's got an over pair that he First slow played, but basically he's been country. unlucky with on the turn. Yeah. And I mean, this play that Goodwin's made on the turn, the very first hand, he's, you know, all of a sudden stuck, what, 33,000 in there? Uh, 
he has to have a bit of uh, form on Stilios because you just you just don't do that, do you? No, I mean, it did surprise me. I thought he's checking behind. I mean, a hand like Ace High might have a lot of showdown value if you know Stelios hadn't hit the flop, and it surprises me that you know he played so aggressively on the turn. And unfortunately for him in this case, Stelios has got trip, so he's not going anywhere. And in fact, he's gone it's all the in. The only one I can put this <laughs> yes. down. I'll tell you what. If if he had thought about it more. Would a call have been better, or is a call only better because we know what Goodwin has? You know, I mean, again, Stelios, if you're he was bluffing on the second, turn, maybe your fold might have even been better. You've got ace nine, you've raised <laughs> it up front, you have been no? called. You should be getting called by a fairly decent hand, and... Uh, yeah, no, I meant it's Stelios. I mean, could Stelios have gotten Goodwin so. on the river there? I mean... <laughs> yeah, I mean, possibly. He, he instantly went all in there on the turn, and uh, possibly, if he just called, maybe Goodwin would have fired again. Big first hand, Stelios coming out strong, <coughs> and the guy who you had to make the favorite, everybody the did, in this thing, is uh, nearly half stacked. Wow, big first hand, I'm sure that's not the start Mark was looking to get off to. I noticed it, mate. <laughs> well, we better cut the hands. Just the one big one, though. Yeah, the Philip two on the top. Always, always ice cream, and uh, king, all those yeah. chips were gone from Mark Goodwin. I'm on the button. On a raise, he's on the big blind, and he passed tens to the first raise. Yeah, and tens, I had aces he's changed. Wow. He was, he was Lee's on the it? button here. He Nick, and he's a guy. Lee. He's played this format a lot, and he plays his cards well. But it's one of those raise mental blocks 6, I think he's having now, which is that he's gotten bad luck, and he just has trouble getting right. over the line. Re raise. 16, yeah, Nathan's played this format a lot, and I've played with Nathan quite a lot recently, and I think he's getting better and better, and I think it might be his time to, you know, do something, win this heat, and go. Oh, he Nick. could go all the way, for Absolutely. sure. Absolutely. Nick's going to think, oh, um, gonna this is a great spot for Goodwin. I mean, a, a great situation because he's against Stelios, and he's made the re-raise here expecting to get paid, right? I mean... You know, he would like to think, given that Stelios is raising an early position, that he's got a hand. We can see that Stelios has only got ace four. So, unfortunately for him, he's probably oh, just going to pick up what's in the middle there. But, but clearly, I've got it wrong. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he's, I guess he's good when sized that pretty good. Only 10,000 more. Stelios can well afford it. If he hits the ace. But, Jesse, uh, what do you want to do with ace four? Do you really want to hit an ace and always worry about your kicker? Now, this is a flop that could be slow played by Goodwin. Yeah. It's so good. And he yeah. has actually slow played it and checked behind. If a deuce comes off, Mark Goodwin's out the door. Out the door quickly. Wow. And, and that gives more outs. He's now got eight outs. So and he's setting up the exact same line yeah. as last time. If Philip Pooh had bet out there, Goodwin would have raised him. Absolutely. Now, Goodwin wants to build the pot. He wants to get some chips in the middle. There's 35,000 in the middle. How much is he going to bet? Stelius has got an overcard to the board, which he might think the ace is good, and eight outs to the up and down. Let, 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 let's be honest here. I mean, if you're Goodwin, you cannot really imagine Philippou having a four here. So you think he's drawing dead, right? Cool. Absolutely. And I tell you what, if he makes the straight, if the seven or the deuce comes, Mark Goodwin will be out the door. Wow, <laughs> close. <laughs> what were you sweating for at home? Did you want to see the chair fly, or did you want to see Mark Goodwin get back That's into it? And it's great. This is Goodwin cool, is back in. Cool. It's cool. Oh, cool. Sorry. Wow, Stelios actually yeah, set him in on the river. Mark yeah, had so same. few chips yeah, left after the river, and he'll be delighted yeah. with this 20. result. Yeah, you don't Take mind it, someone it. betting into you when you got queens full, do you? <laughs> Suspicious check. And how about that? Goodwin goes from uh, seller to penthouse dweller. Absolutely. No Limit Hold'em is a funny, funny game. That's why you've got to keep patient. He is Mr. Cool. He didn't panic when he lost the third of his chips, and now he's on the top of the leaderboard. Today's table is a bit of a sick one. You've got James Aikenhead, uh, nicknamed Jack on the River because that's how we always beat you. You've got Ben, um, his actual real name's Benjamin Button, because he looks younger now than he did like 40 years ago and he's been in the game forever. Pretty Boy Ryan, nicknamed The Value for obvious reasons, so that's probably where we'll get most of our chips. You've got Nathan Lee, worth about 400 million, so he doesn't care less, you can't beat him. It's just a real tough lineup.
Welcome back to the Party Poker European Open 5. Yeah, One of the intangibles <laughs> in this format is there is so much value to, to creating a good <laughs> image uh, at the table, isn't there? <laughs> Absolutely, because when the like blinds that. get high and you start re-raising <laughs> people and you haven't played a hand for a while, they're going to give you a lot of credit and lay down ace-9, ace-10, ace-jack, ace 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 these type of hands, you know? It's an image that cool. Dubai Dave will never have, and I fear that Stilio <laughs> may not develop it either, but he's got his own weapons, doesn't he? Absolutely, and again, there's been a, you know, what one would call as a loose raise from Fronda, king-3. Ryan's on the A-train here. Check. And uh, Stelios is about to face okay. a tricky... Well, that was... That kind of decision's given him an, an open door. Well, it gives him a free card, and, and uh, well, Fronda now goes ahead. If Stelios has got Flans or Bluffing on this pot because he doesn't think Fronda's got anything, he's not going to run into too check. much luck here. Check. And Fronda, tricky man. There's a nice little check on the turn there. He's only going to bet out hands he's he's beating, isn't he, on the on the turn? And he might pick up some money on the river by checking. Well, he knows Stelios is aggressive. If he keeps checking and underrepresenting his hand, Stelios might have a little bluff on the river. Ten he pass. hasn't. And you know what? Fronda's is betting his king for value now. Yeah, and uh, I mean Stelios does have showdown value, doesn't he? I mean, surely Fronda would check ace high here. Yeah, there's a lot of time. You know, would someone really bet ace queen, ace ten on the river here for value? Stelius might get curious, but but he's folded. Tell you, already we're seeing some, you almost call it sorcery here. Guys are really mixing things up. When I saw the draw for this heat, I was very excited to be allowed to commentate on it. We've got some really great plays from UK poker here. And uh, I think we're going to see a really exciting heat. Brian, nice Brian, cards for Brian. Nathan, and he's been active. Uh oh, he's oh, in trouble. <laughs> I mean, this, this. I'm sorry, the guy gets no breaks. The guy gets no <laughs> breaks. And given that Ryan Fronda has the loose aggressive image, been splashing around, Pass. this is going to look like a mon monster to Lee, and he's not going to believe this re raise one little Pass. bit. Pass. Now you sank me if you bluff me on TV. <laughs> I won't bluff you on TV. Reverse Where's psychology there from Fronda. No. Don't get about what the hands are. Calling. Yeah, I say there's more luck. Yeah. Yeah. He got insta well, and they didn't like it. I see it. And uh, the it's only like good news one. here for Lee is that uh, he's going to have a bout. Oh, yeah. Oh, I don't know, 60, 70,000 yeah. back. It is Fronda all in, but with the Rockets. Well, he can hit a jack and obviously win this 160,000 chip pot, but he's also against a guy that has, you know, some of the least chips in play, 77,000. So if this was going to be a cold deck against someone, he's lucky it was Fronda. Flop, turn, and river to come. Wow. Look at that. And that hurts Ryan something serious. He came out fast. He got it in with the aces, and now he's two cards away from getting stunned. Normal for me in every, every tournament, isn't it? Ryan looks very disappointed, as any poker player would be in this situation, Jesse. Yeah, it's... Drawn to two outs. Sorry, and that's not one yeah, of nice. uh, okay. Sorry, it's like, it's Never normal. seems fair to get aces yeah. cracked. I've played everyone. Good luck. There's just nothing best. else. I thought you were right in the move. Yeah. That was, yeah, that was yeah, basically so kind of a cold deck for both those players. players. It happens in poker, but it takes the fun that. out of it, yeah. doesn't it? At 2 and 4,000 with these lines and uh, Ryan's aggressive image, he could have well thought that Ryan was making a move on him there. Went in with Jackson, and hit the jack. Maybe. Maybe it's Nathan Lee's time after all. Aces. Yeah, he played them bad, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> all his chips Got the money in free flow, didn't he? You can't do that. All he had to do was just call and just see if... Uh, this format, the one-table six-seater's been around for a while, and really one of the first sort of uh, strategies uh, of this format was, uh, you know, fold for the first two levels, then come out firing in level three. I mean, guys like Roy the Boy, they sort of used to do that. Park, Parkinson. I mean, this is what basically Aikenhead has employed. Uh, we know he's got the gears in the game. Do you think he's going to start start uh, finding the spot to make a move? James is a good friend of mine. He's going to be keeping very alert. 
He knows he might not get any good hands coming up, but he's just looking for a situation, Jesse. Now, that situation might just be Ben raising his big blind or Nathan raising with his big stack light on the button to his big blind. He's looking for that situation now where he can make a big move and get some chips together. All in. We raise all in. These are the spots that James is going to be looking for. <coughs> And Pass. that's going to send a big sign to James. That's a big boost of confidence mm -hmm. for him. Ben folded pretty quickly there. Didn't give it the Hollywood. So, you know, the table will know Ben didn't have much there. And uh, ace eight blind versus blind. You see, 77 to 95. Huge jump in his stack for James. He'll be happy with that. Second raise worth a lot more than the first. And it may have looked standard, but he still had to pull the trigger and he found it. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, if, if Ben's got ace jack and, and calls him, he's unlucky. But with these chips, that these blinds, he's got to be making these types of moves, Jesse. Is that playable for Goodwin? Cool. He's got... Pass. Interestingly enough, he's just limped, and now this is where Ben's going to make his big move. Well, Ben's got 46,000. I'm all in. Yeah, he, 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 he nearly looked to raise an amount that, uh, you know, would be a standard raise at this stage, but he just decided he's too short and he had Come. to put it in. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, interesting spot here for Aiken. There's a couple things, I guess, to think about. Um, when a guy limps early, it is a, considered a squeeze situation, right? So Aiken had in his mind could say that Ben doesn't could be weaker than uh, Ace Nine. Absolutely. I mean, the thing I. Th the, the it's reason, thin. It's very thin, isn't it? It's very thin. The reason why I think James is going to get off this hand is that he's still got Mark behind him in the hand that has limped in. He, know, he knows Mark plays pretty solidly. He knows Mark's limped in with something. He doesn't know what that something is. And he knows Ben's a very solid player who's also gone all in. So he knows what his ace nine suited. Looks very pretty, but he can't beat much. So he's... he's obviously is, Oh, wow. Right, Stelios is... Uh, we're going to see a race between the two short stacks, so it seems. I don't think Stelios is going to be able to to get off a hand. Ace-9 suited is one thing, Jesse. Pocket tens is entirely another thing, five-handed. I mean, I am... Um, I, I was going to be really interested to see what Goodwin was going to do if Stelios folded. Obviously, if Stelios comes in, Goodwin is out. But, um... I'm worried about it, sure. Apart from <laughs> Nathan Lee's <laughs> deuce four in this hand, eight, Jesse, we've got Ace-Queen suited, Ace-9 suited, Pocket oh, tens, oh, and he's going to pass him! I mean, Stelios was saying he's worried about well, Mark. They're both passed on beating them too. don't worry <laughs> about that. <laughs> That's true, and I know that now. I wow. Think James may have played it now, how should Goodwin think about this? I mean, it it's probably a good job I only raised six to start with a bit. I Probably think the way Goodwin's going to look at like this is that Ben's a tight okay. player. He's only invested right. 6,000 in the pot. He's going to let Ben have it. But Ben's a very good player. He could be it's making rice, that move a with a lot less than ace queen suited there. And I think that laydown with pocket tens is a bad laydown, in my opinion. If you raise your committed, right? See, Lee's got 236,000, and uh, Aiken had Ben Roberts fighting out the back. I'll tell you, when they put out the video, the watches of European poker, I mean, you're thinking about the Pass. Skull Man, Sammy George, Pass. Stelios, definitely one Pass. of the top five watches we've seen Pass. here today. There's a great bling in this European Open 5. Absolutely. Some of the watches these guys have got more than my bankroll. Cool. No worries. Now, the open there. shove was definitely an option here for Aikenhead. He didn't exercise it. He's got about 11 big blinds, and now he's he's let Stelios flop the nuts. Um, you know, <laughs> I mean, not let him, but you know. <laughs> Um, let's just hope James doesn't try and get too okay. creative in the, well, he's he does, having one stab and he is done. No pair, no draw. Stelios, Hollywood, can't remember what I've got. Oh yeah, I flopped the nuts. <laughs> I call. There. There's basically no bad hands here. No bad turn cards here for Stelios. Cool. He is hating it. And uh, I mean, is he done? I is there any in Aikenhead's mind? Um, oof, that could be, you know, that's... 
you're right, Jesse, that could be a card that he thinks might be good to bluff at because if Stelios is just calling with a 7 or a 4, could be a scare card for Stelios. Okay. But I'm going to temper Jeff. that with the fact Stelios could be just calling Jeff. with the Queen of Diamonds and now Stelios has got there. But Stelios has checked. So Stelios has made a good check to induce a bluff on the river. I really hope James doesn't take it. It, it was, thinking about it. Uh-oh, James has made a straight. Yeah, he's going to know that has very little value. It's either going to be well ahead of pair He's just going to check for value here. It's going to be well ahead of a pair, but it is still going to be behind even the deuce of diamonds here, Jesse. So a check here is in order. And in, in James' mind, when he's thinking about the hand Stelios could have, um, more likely check. for Stelios to have the diamond check. than the ace because of the way uh, the free flop play was. But Absolutely. I mean, he limped in and Stelios doesn't raise, so you know it's unlikely Stelios has got an ace in his hand. But uh, there's 32,000 in the pot. If we see Stelios coming in with a small bet of like, 000. you know, around half the pot or less than the pot, James might get really curious. But a 15k bet still represents at this stage a quarter of James's stack, and there's 47,000 in the middle there now. So this is tough. It is tough. I mean, I mean, the deck is just giving him. Pain. If he thinks this through, he's going to realize the way Stelios has played this hand, this is a value bet here. Stelios wouldn't be betting for value hands like an ace or a seven here. So Stelios really either has what he's representing or nothing. But the way Stelios has played this hand, it's much more likely in this case to be something rather than nothing. But he, would he have, could he have played a bluff like this? Or if he was bluffing, he would have been... More Betting inclined to bluff on the turn. More Absolutely. inclined to bluff on the turn. If, if there was a bluff in, in Stelios's range that, you know, James can only really beat it here with a call, then, then ac activity on the turn after calling on the flop would have been the way the hand went. Why would Stelios be betting an ace here? Ugh. Oh, he doesn't want to. Look at this. It's, it's a bad it's card. Corner of his stack. There's so much in there. He really needs chips. Is there any real difference in his mind between having 60 and 45? He's still in all-in mode. That's what he might be thinking. He might be looking just to hope Stelios is bluffing and try and pick up that 47,000 that's in the middle. And to be honest, Jesse, if anyone is bluffing on this table, it is going to be Stelios here. Right, and as you mentioned, the upside of being able to have over 100,000 that's is... What, right. That's why James is a great player. He's impressed me. He's just laid down the nine when he's getting low and getting desperate against a chip leader who could have anything in Nathan Lee. And he's just made... He stored it through under this pressure, under the TV cameras, and made a very, very strong fold. Plenty more on that, I'm sure, from our hand analysis expert, Neil Channing. Running into the nuts, or nearly. There is this problem that you have, that great players have. Do you take the money that's out there, or do you try and go for the double up? Yeah, now, um, James Aikenhead's a good friend of mine, and uh, we had a long chat, actually, before this heat. And he told me he was going to play super tight. In fact, he said, I'm going to play Channing-esque. Uh, I'm not going to play any hands early on, and then I'm going to wait, and when the blinds go up, I'm going to start doing the business. Uh, the problem for James is, it's just too tempting. Playing poker is really good fun, <laughs> and sitting there watching is really boring. And he's found the 10-8 of spades, and he's like itching to get involved, and he doesn't really want to move all in. He feels like he's got a few too many chips just to steal Stelios's blind. Um, so he's kind of in a bit of a quandary and he decides to call and see a flop and that's where the trouble starts. Isn't it the, the funny thing about poker is that you just open the door a crack and then somebody just woo! Well, this is it. I mean, obviously he's very unlucky. Stelios has flopped uh, the nuts and uh, it's going to be hard for James to win this pot from then on in. Uh, but he, he does quite well at the end because uh, he finally makes a straight and, uh, you know, Stelios has played his hand uh, pretty well. Uh, he's probably a bit unlucky that a fourth diamond came on the turn and uh, saved him from, uh, maybe saved James from, from certain death. But uh, yeah, James, James did well to make the lay down at the end. And those chips saved on the river, they could pay spades for Aikenhead later on. I'll tell you what, after that, James's head must be Aiken. See if Aikenhead can come back after the break. Welcome back. I'm here with Nick Perso and the guy who gets knocked out next, Nick, it's not like That's his life goes with it. I mean, you know, I mean, I mean, you know, I mean, I know it's a big tournament, but, um, you know. They're playing for 200,000. <laughs> Owen. Owen. Okay. 
Uh, bet Ben's overjoyed to see a fair blind versus way, blind. Way better than he to needs to have here, right? Is it uh, not an ace, is it? No. Oh, okay. How much more, please? Uh, and uh, if Aiken Head thinks 30, that 30, Ben is shoving any two, more. this might be on the order. In total. It's at the bottom end of everything, If if even if Ben Roberts pushes blind and says he's pushing blind. And it's only 33,000 to call. If it's any two and it's queen nine suited, it's still at the bottom end, but it's a call. But this is queen nine off suit. And you know what? It's really, really at the bottom end. I, you mean, I, I almost don't think it's a call. There's more value in James shoving in himself. He's proven that he's got the heart to shove 6 3. You know, he oh. might wait for it. Wow, he is called. He's, got, he's, he's, he's obviously in the bad, as good shape as he can yeah. be. Two over cards, oh, it's okay. a straight That's race. But uh, you think the determining factor <laughs> there is that Ben actually <laughs> wasn't that? shoving That's any two, fair. and he's kind of proved that. I mean, James will be pretty <clears throat> surprised to see that Ben was as strong as a pair of sixes, but, you know, he's delighted that he's actually got a oh, coin flip change. situation and that Ben yeah. doesn't have him dominated or actually have him beat with a hand like ace five. But uh, it's a good flop for Ben. It is, uh, although... Ben got out of jail against Aiken Head earlier. Is it time for revenge? Two cards to come. James still has 24% equity in the pot. Less now. Only six outs of James. Yeah, Queen or a nine. Oh. Who feels it? Oh. And a king. <laughs> Roberts, <laughs> double double through. <laughs> and uh, I mean, Nick. Thank you. What do you think the determining factor was there There was for Aiken Head? He avoided gambling earlier. Is it because he's still alive? I mean, he's really now down to where Ben kind of was. He's got 34,000. Lee, still over half the chips in play. Aiken Head, just over three big blinds. I mean, this is it's pretty incredible. Look at this. It's a whitewash. James in the small blind. Yes. If Ben folds here, and he must, um, yes. does Aikenhead have so few chips that he actually can't push any two? It's almost like that, that he's getting what? called, but, you All know, uh, it, it, he's just so low. There's 15,000 dead money out right. there. Yeah, I mean, he's mm. it's lucky for him that Stelios has got 5-3. Now Stelios has got to do the maths. Let's work out what's in there. He's called. Yeah, and a, <laughs> about as good a shape Lovely as you nice. can be in, uh, with 10-7. I guess he's... Yeah, both he's, of you. He's maybe 70% like or something? Yeah, yeah. 60, oh, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60. I knew you had that. He's a two-to-one yeah. underdog, but, you know, he was getting around that price on the pot. I didn't see the exact maths as the James chips went in, but, you know, James needs off. to win this. He's yeah, got the best hand. Moves. Stelios is a gambler. He called. There we go. Oh, yeah. Trouble now. Aikenhead all in. Needs the 7, needs the 10. He's got running clubs as well. That might be another backdoor lifeline for James. Lovely. Look like he feels it. He can't afford to lose races. Perfect. And he's okay. out. He's out. Never had much to work with, Nick. I mean, pulled off some stunning survival moves tonight. And, uh,. Maybe just going to be a little disappointed, but uh, tough heat all round for everybody. Yeah. Well, the seal <laughs> cracked, the four <laughs> left <laughs> now, <laughs> and <laughs> I mean, Stelios, is he all of the sudden, does he have breathing room? He's the man who got the double up. Obviously, it wasn't much. But you know what, Jesse, he has actually got nearly double what the guys who are behind him have. Right, so in, in pots that Nathan Lee is not yeah, in, not uh, Stelios <laughs> can swing a little <laughs> yeah. freely. I think yeah, when it's folded to him, he can just set too. Mark in with oh, a yeah. lot of hands and make Mark call for his tournament life. Ben Roberts, back in fray. Ben's got a premium yeah. hand, ace king. This is the best title. hand he's seen. Yeah, this is what he's been waiting for. <laughs> Did you hear the big sigh? Yes. <laughs> oh, wow! Oh. We raise all in. Yeah, Must be yeah. nice I'm to be Mark Goodwin. Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. I hope you have an ace. Yeah, he's got two of them, Ben. <laughs> you do have an ace. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I have an ace. That's pretty good. That. <laughs> and uh, this is a oh, pretty no. bad spot for Ace King. Uh, I mean, this is the worst spot Ace King can be in. Many black cards, Cheers please. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If Ace King's against yeah, another yeah. 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 it's not the end of the world. <laughs> Even against Kings, it's not the end of the world. But this is the worst matchup Ben Roberts can oh, see. Oh, black cards. 
And he's got a ray, a glimmer spades. of hope. Running kings or running spades for uh, Ben? Yeah, or running straight? Five of spades. I mean, oh, the chance for a draw again. <laughs> it is good when all in, but there's there's not that many uh, chips between them. Board. No, Ben's going to be crippled if he loses this pot. That's it. Ooh, That's it. Not bad. Not bad. That's it. That was as good as pairing the board. I can't win, can I? No. 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 Who's right. getting no, you never know. Right. Come on, let's, let's, you, you never, never know. know. Oh, that was close. Hold on. This is too bad. What a gentleman. Even though he's lost the pot, he's still smiling. He's still having fun. This is a real gentleman we're dealing with here. I mean, you know, I don't know if you know the story about the final table of the World Series. There was seven seven players left. Nice and uh, Ben was second chip leader. Yeah, and, uh, that one. Scotty Let's DeWin was chip hey. leader. And uh, they've got no, yeah. all the chips oh, in, in a thanks three way the good news. <laughs> And uh, Ben had aces. Again, Scotty had the ace. Should have been slower in turning them over when you said, I hope you've got an ace. Yeah, you turn one. That's how Ben got knocked out of the final table of the World Series. Oh, I would take it right with you. I know you don't mean it. You never heard that. It's quite amusing though to say, I hope you've got an ice, yeah, isn't it? When you, see, <laughs> you do think you're good with ice cream, yeah, don't you? Sure. Massive fans like that. Uh, or Andy, it's incredible, isn't it? How does Mark. He's got more moves than Harry Houdini. He was blinding away, blinding away, blinding away. Made a. What a lot of people would consider a tight bowl with two sixes. He was right against the two nines of Stelios. Pass. And then Come found the crowd. I dare jumps. you, I dare you. <laughs> Come on, bang. Oh. King Queen, actually. Wow, Ben would be oh, delighted no, to see no, that he's got King Coin. No, a two to one underdog Lee here again. I'm good at these races. I mean, was it um, King Jack. an automatic all in there for Nathan Lee? Um, the, 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 was there more, yeah. some, what, what's the math that came oh, into so play there? 15, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. Well, he had five invested. There was 15 in the pot with Ben's uh, dead oh, 10. Oh, you know, oh, Ben only had 19 <laughs> yeah, He was just pushing only two cards. So, yeah, it was pretty much don't look, put some reds in. And uh, Robert's hearts. all in here. Seven of hearts. And, I mean, he's basically going to have a life. You do like uh, to put yourself in pain, don't you? This. Well, Goodwin just had this well, stack and just doubled up and got back in the game. So, I mean, so if he's back in the seven or the three or six, six of hearts, six of hearts or yeah. some kind of weird hearts. straight, then... Um, Deuce. Five Still okay. You called the weird straight. I did call a weird straight. It would be unfortunate to see Ben go here. But, this, you know, even if Lee loses his spot, it's just a little flesh wound. He doesn't really care. And the king queen will play. I'm like a cat. I'm like a cat. <laughs> he has no, been all in more, I guess, more times than any other player at the table. He's only been in the head once, like actually. <laughs> 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 Which for a solid player like Ben is rather unusual. But, um, you know, he can't be faulted with the ace king there. He can't be faulted with pocket sixes. And he's still in there. And when he's still in it, he can, he can definitely win. He needs another double up there. Four guys have survived so far. I, I think you know those aces that Goodwin picked up before. Yes. That stack he's got there. Back right to normal. Now. Well, here comes Ben Holland. Yes. You just you get the feeling. You call? Call. Quick call from so Goodwin. Quickly. Um, oh, do call. Goodwin so knows that you know Ben Roberts <laughs> is going to be pushing a lot of hands here. He's not going to like to lose half of his stack. This is where Ben Roberts can become dangerous again. We can see a reverse in chips between Mark and Ben here, and Ben's got the best hand. This is a key pot. Right, and I mean, Goodwin called quickly. He knew exactly what the range was. I mean, that was pretty, and, and this that was a no, proper call in, in your mind? Absolutely, Ben's pushing for five big yeah, blinds, and you know, he's gone ahead. Every chance. Now Spade. just the eight. Just King the ace, Spade, excuse me, fine. just the ace for no, Ben, or he is Spade. gone. Look at the percentages now, Jesse. Massive Six favorite, points. Goodwin, 82% favorite. This is the kind of call it's you make off the man. table. You do your maths and... <gasps> wow. Ooh la la. Oh, Ooh la. baby. <laughs> make it black. <laughs> Eddie Spade. Let it be a as long as it's black. <laughs> black, black ace is good. <laughs> Less cards to come, but the percentages have gone back in, you know, up for Roberts. What's there? All right. All right, boys. I'm looking at All the best. It gave it a good run. It was a funny old heat. All right, uh, take care. Yeah, thanks for uh, uh, taking it yeah? for him. But three ways now. Uh, uh, feel like the players come back to the deck. Blinds hitting the seven at fifteen thousand level. Uh, it's it's been an odd heat, but this is fascinating. And I'll tell you what: no matter who gets heads up, it's going to be fascinating heads up. There's a lot of dynamics and a lot of play right now. Pass. 
Cole. No rice. Oh, I wanted to see him move that one there. No rice. If he moves all in, good win folds. He picks up the 22 without a showdown. Just limping here with 6 7. Allows, in fact, the better hand to outflop him. And who knows? And there we go. An up and down and a pair for Stelios. And top pair for Goodwin. Cool. All the chips Boy. go in. There we go. This had to happen at some point. There's not that much in it, is there, percentage wise? It's um, a flip in, in, in most senses. Wow. I'm sure we'll see the percentages <laughs> there. 53% to Mark Goodwin. Wow. 43% with a split pot 4% of the time with the running straight. Yeah. Philippou needs to hit, but he's got a lot of cards to hit. The 6, the 7, the 5, or the 10. Anything roundabout where he's at. Yeah, that's it, he says. And nice. Goodwin's got a redraw. Well, that's one of them, and the split pot percentage has gone from 4 to 18% now. The 6 is there. Only 5 or 10 will chop it for these guys. All of them are okay. The 8. The nine, oh, nine the nine, deuce, nine. are the win cards for Goodwin. And that's not it. Tooper. And uh, the way Philippu played that hand allowed him to actually double up. Uh, oh, he's going to be feeling pretty good about it. So even though Stelios doubled up, um, these blinds so fast, it's, it's effectively uh, 7,000 a hand to play. Just over 10 big blinds, 11 big blinds, 166,000. Nice. Okay, it's an easy all in on the call. Quick call, call. good win, Phil. Yeah, he may be in trouble here. He could be in good shape, but he's not. Yeah, and they did have an ace, ace nine. That's massive blind okay. versus blind, and that's a pretty big hand, actually, for Goodwin to have gone all in with. So look at the percentages there, Jesse. 44% uh, for Goodwin, 55% for Lee. It's another one of those coin flips. Is he feeling it? Nathan's won the flips he's had to today. Goodwin all in. Must win spot for Mr. Cool. European number one. G-U-K-P-T number one in the rankings this year. And uh, Wow. Goodwin you, goes ahead. Yeah, when you're number one, sometimes you can pull those out. Ace of the nine. Still the same. Five outs here, 11% chance for Lee. I don't think he's going to sweat this too much. He's still got plenty of chips, but would have rather liked to see Goodwin go out, but straight. The, right yeah, now. just in yeah. case. Top <laughs> pair wasn't enough. The straight is the backup. Just in case you had a set. And as you said, uh, the fascinating thing now, as far as the play goes, is that the three stacks have never been closer. Average chips, 200K. Uh, no one too far away from that now. That really does pull Nathan Lee back, you know, closer to the rest of the guys. Only 200, just over 250,000 now, and, and now it's really close. Well, you know what they say about tournament hold'em, Nick. Why do you build a big stack so you can take a knock and still have an average stack? Absolutely. He got it in with the best hand. He got unlucky. All it right. was a very close right. on the percentages, but now, you know, he's still got the chip lead, and it's, it, it's all to 40. play for. 40. 40,000 total. This 40 raise is coming into play quite a few times. It's uh, I'm all in. wow, good one for the hand. Big decision here now. How much more is it for Nathan Lee? Okay. He knows an ace is strong. He knows Mark's got this in his artillery to make this kind of re-raise with a worse hand than ace eight. It's 118 to call. There's already 205,000 in the pot, so he's near that two to one mark. This is tough for Nathan. I think I think it's too big to fall. I, I mean, I don't I don't know. Would you have trouble? Ace eight's a big hand, three-handed, isn't it? I'm an online player. I'm, I'm, I'm smashing up the call button at this point. But these tournaments play slightly differently, and I, I still think Nathan's got a very, very hard fold here. If you if you talk about upside downside, I mean, how many chips is Lee left with? Should he just pass? He got about 160. Uh, the call and lose will leave him with about 40, and the call and win. Is gonna is gonna give him 350. I mean, the thing he's got to consider is is Mark making Sorry, a move here with a lesser yeah. hand. Is this a kind of king queen king jack type play? Does Mark have it in him to make this move with jack nine of spades, queen jack of diamonds? You know, Nathan's got to be considering all of this. When Nathan raises on the button, he's at the top end of his range here with Ace Eight. He could be raising a very very wide range of hands, and having a hand as strong as Ace Eight, you know. 
he's kind of thinking, does Mark think I'm just stealing here? The, all of these things are problems in the thought process of uh, Lee. And, you know, him and Goodwin have a bit of history. They know each other. They know each other's got an aggressive game. He's making the call. And I don't blame him for that. Yeah. He's not going to like what he sees. I, don't know, I think he's gotten unlucky here. I, I mean, as you said, you would have smashed the call button up. Um, wow. Oh, Nathan Lee has played so good. He has played so well so tonight, Nick. Is this where it all goes down in flames for him? He's done so well in this heat. He's been in a strong heat. You know, there's been some top players in here. He got lucky against Ryan, another top player who I bet he was really glad to see the end of him. Ben Roberts, James. I mean, three left. He was cruising. But look, Jesse, it comes down to a situation like this, ace-8 versus ace-10. And there's some backdoor straight draws galore. Oh. oh, this is tense. Believe me. Both these Can guys want it. There are no split pots. No, it's a good flop for Goodwin. The board hasn't paired. It's not all high cards with split pots galore. This is... Uh, Nathan Lee's reduced to an eight. Oh, that okay. hurts. Mark Goodwin. Oh, Gets it through. I thought ice nine. Well, there can only be one winner, but uh, sometimes it feels like there should be three. These guys should all get clapped on the back. It's been a great heat. Nathan Lee now in the big blind here, and he's it's basically yeah. half his stack. Spinning. It's cool, any two. He's pot committed. Yeah. Don't look. Just call it off. Double up. He cannot afford to post here and fold. He's right. going to be in the small blind the next time. He just has to gamble. In a double jeopardy, not only did he lose most of his stack, but uh, the blinds have just gone up. You're not looking back <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm going to set you in. <laughs> Obviously. Oh, What's he got? King three for Mark Goodwin. That's, that's a good Better than the average <laughs> hand. <laughs> Too live. And it sounds like, well, yeah. Double down for uh, Nathan here, but he is live. That's one thing going for him. Only a two to one underdog. He needs to get lucky here. There's a hundred thousand chips nearly in this pot, and uh, ah, he's drawing nearly dead. <laughs> wow! Oh my <laughs> gosh! I'll tell you what. When it rains, it pours. Next, do something annoying. No, and that's good. Okay. okay. Cheers, mate. He's, he's played a good game, and he's he's, he's taken this with a lot of class. Um, Number. Some might argue he played the best today. You know, Jesse he played a great game. He's really unlucky to go out third. Fascinating stuff. Mr. Cool, Mark Goodwin. He has played good. He has played really good. Stay tuned to see if Mr. Cool can get the lot after the break. Welcome back to the action here. This has been a cracker. Competitive, intense, high pressure. One seat in the semifinals, and Stelios Philippou, okay, he is outchipped, but what heart he has shown to get here. On the other hand, he is against pretty much the best in Europe right now. Perhaps the best at this format. Mr. Cool, huge strike rate, Nick, and I mean, you can't find fault in anything he's done. No, absolutely. Mark stuck to a game plan. It's worked well. He's going into the head, uh, heads up with nearly 400,000 in chips. Do the stats tell the story? A look at the bet frequency. We've got the aggressive cash game player in Philip Vu, 33% of hands. And Mark just behind him. They've nearly won the same amount of hands. But, you know, that extra buffer of chips might just see Mark Goodwin through to the semi final. Blinds are 10 and 20,000. I mean, Stelios plays the biggest cash games in London. He's a flop player. He's used to seeing flops. I mean, Mark Rice. might not have as Rice. big an edge as he thinks over someone like Stelios. What is this about? This is a momentum thing. 60,000 title? Just... Oh. I think Stelios is all in. An ace heads up with that stack. I don't think... Mark, Mark's timing, unlucky for him, a bit off here. Logically, or I'm sorry, the numbers That's say that it was a re-raise. Um, I guess logically, Philippou saying to himself, it's the first time he's raised me heads up. He must have something. Absolutely. That's obviously the way he read the situation. But, you know, he was in great shape there. Mark had no hand. Mark's timing's been immaculate, so it seems so far. 
And, and I guess that's why Mark did it. You know, that, that's what makes him so good. He's aware of the patterns, aware of having to throw uh, the limps, the folds, and the raises in in certain frequencies. Yeah, absolutely. Aware of his image and aware of how the other players view him at the time. He hasn't raised the Stelios' big blind, so he decided to do it with no hand. Raise. I'm all in. Okay, he's got to call now. total, re-raise all in. It's another one of those 55-45 type situations. Stelios can't afford to put 60,000 chips in out of his stack of just over 200,000 and fold, really. And if he puts Goodwin on the hand that Goodwin has, I mean, not that that's so easy to do, but if he does, it, he's, he's pretty much getting the price, isn't he? Yeah, absolutely. If you could see Mark Goodwin's hand on its back, he would call here, given the pot odds. He's got to call 160,000 more. He's getting basically two to one on the call, and he's actually more more near a coin flip with these two ma hands in a matchup. So let's see if Stelios can dig this one out. He knows he's behind, but this is the point where you just have to gamble, and he's folded. And, and, and this seems to me to be just going one way. He's just folded an ace to 10 four. He's just raised folded like a really big percentage of his stack. This, the most complicated, this heads up big blind type of play, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I've been impressed with Stelios today. He's maybe got a few pre-flop leaks. He's a bit too loose at the earlier stages, but cool. wow. He's decided yeah, to slow play this ace now. And if this board comes low, someone could make a straight and someone could make two pair. This is interesting. Jeez, I mean, look how, hard. A flush okay. look for how hard Goodwin has hit that. If Stelios puts a chip in this pot, he'll be getting check raised all in, that's for sure. Yeah. But he's checked behind. Check. Wow. I'm surprised Mark doesn't put in a bet there, but check. he does have a pair. Yeah, interesting. And well, now he's got a counterfeited two pair. 20,000. 20, cool. Yeah, cool. yeah, now he called him with ace high. He's, uh, he played it slow, but... And that gives a lot of Mark's river bets credibility now. It was a bit of a flop, wasn't it? Yeah, nice. I'm pretty sure Mark was check raising all in had Stelios made a move at that pot. Yeah. Mark and knows. Perhaps even on the turn. Yeah, absolutely. And Mark knows even if Stelios has something like top pair, he's still in 50 50 shape against top pair. So Mark nearly at the half million chip mark. This match going deep into the dark old night. Uh, already the longest match of this tournament so far, Nick, uh, hand number-wise. First time we've reached the 15 and 30,000 cool. level. And uh, I think we've already played, uh, uh, no race. oh, I don't know, eight, nine hands of it. I don't know what Mark's doing here. He's got pocket threes. It yeah. doesn't flop I, I well. There's, there, there, there's 45,000 in the middle. He's giving, you know, Stelios a chance to hit a flop. It's a really hard hand to play. He should just be looking to take down what's in the middle. So what, what is he? What is the argument? Well, he can't be trapping. He can't be limping in, 50. hoping that Stelios makes a big 50, raise to obviously try and snap call because he's never going to be in good shape, even if Stelios does decide to bluff, move all in. If he decides to call, Stelios turns over Queen 8, and now he's flipping. That's not what Mark wants. We know that. We've seen that by Pass. the way he's been playing. And now he's had to just bet out and hope that, you know, Stelios doesn't hit any part of the flop. I'm all in. Cool. All in. Cool. Okay, so now we've got an all in. He's got a suited queen. He's decided it's enough to push, and he's walked straight into a hand. But... To his credit, he's made the move, six, he's live, <laughs> he's going to win nearly 40% of the six, time. Seven. And he's playing a 300,000 pot. As you said, he's 2-1 to one against Philippou, but he just needs to get this one through. And uh, if he does, you know, Goodwin's confidence could sap. This is it for Mark. He's a 2-1 to one favorite. There's the ace. He's a massive favorite now. Is it Goodwin in the semis? Looks like it. <coughs> Jack of Diamonds probably the card of maximum sweat. And that's that's completely Cheers, mate. safe. Well done, mate. Thanks very much. Cheers. It's all over. I'll tell you what. Mm. I mean, talk about playing a heat with training yeah, wheels. Like that was the long, time. slow Thank road to be caused, but Mark Goodwin got it through. I played well today. Um, Played really tight, made a few moves, um, 
played a bit aggressive to start off with, sat back a little bit. Um, maybe heads up, I should have been a bit more aggressive. Obviously, I'm like ecstatic to get through to the semi-final. This is tough, you know, it's fast, hard poker and uh, it's a great adrenaline rush and uh, I'm a, an addict gambler, so uh, I get plenty of adrenaline for free, so it's great. With only one guaranteed seat left in the first semi-final, the four major poker nations will sit down to play Greece, Ireland, England, and East London, here on the Party Poker European Open 5.